Hello guys, welcome back to another YouTube by Kaya Plus. My name is JP and together with me is Jinping. So today we're going to talk about uh, not something in detail but briefly because I think just a few weeks back uh, someone uh, in particularly Jim Channels actually went public and talked about his short position against Data Center REITs. And of course, uh, if you are actually invested in uh, Singapore's REIT uh, and particularly a data center centric REIT, you might have seen the uh, sell down effect coming down. So who's right and who's wrong, right? So today we'll go through a little bit deeper on some of the data we have managed to obtain from uh, you know, reliable sources together with the uh, sources and then you check for yourselves whether uh, you think that uh, whether Jim Chano's uh, critics and, and, and short position makes sense. And of course, we'll be talking about uh, real reads right here, right? Uh, and whatever that we will be sharing will just be purely our opinions, does not construe you to buy, sell, or hold any positions, right? So I think we'll go through to the uh, news headline that actually made uh, quite a wave, particularly to the um, data center risk in Singapore. So you can see right here, uh, this is an excerpt where uh, Jim Chanos, one of the uh, venture capital who has entered into a short position against uh, data center reads. So meaning to say that Jim Chanos thinks that data center reads right now might not be as great as they are, right? And hence uh, with the high valuation, Proceed. He actually said that ah, okay, I'll enter into a short position. I'll come up with my own points and uh, you know analysis and why I think that they should not be worth as much as today. And that is where the uh, sell down actually happened. But uh, if you, of course you are you are reviewing this uh, video, you might have actually seen the price rebound a little bit. But uh, just to actually brief you guys through what is the data center read, but actually it's just not that much different from a normal read. So basically, as an investor of a read uh, or data center read, you actually uh, put in your hard-earned capital into investing into properties, investment properties that are uh, molded to become data centers. And when these data centers are leased out to uh, any tenants out there, uh, they will actually collect rental from these tenants. And then when they grow and when they collect, um, rental and then when they net it off all the expenses, uh, they actually comes up with the net profit and then these uh, profits will then be uh, distributed back to investors in the form of distributions or dividends. So it's the same theory as normal REITs, just that uh, data center REITs are the up and coming uh, subsector that can actually uh, be quite, uh, you know, uh, very lucrative kind of uh, the, uh, property or big investment. So you can see right here, uh, on top of what Jim Channels have claimed, uh, you can see that there are not so much truth in his uh, so-called claims because you can actually come across new headlines where uh, other social media companies like Meta, TikTok. So these two, are, I would say, rather huge uh, internet companies or social media companies currently, uh, you know, uh, having large market share and they, Personally, themselves, these two companies do not actually really, uh, you know, hold on or own or even build their own data centers, but rather they go through a leasing kind of model, meaning to say that they rent it from a reputable data center provider. And uh, this is how they remain asset like to run their business. And of course, not just Meta and TikTok choose to remain um, asset like uh, other big tech companies like Microsoft, right? Your Azure uh, service provider. So these is also one of the examples where uh, AWS, you know, uh, companies that uh, may be a little bit more asset intensive can also uh, adopt a hybrid model. They can have their own data centers, but they also can also lease some of the portion also uh, from other reputable data centers providers. So these are the two uh, sources. And if you look at the uh, data of the annual size of the global data sphere, meaning to say that how fast or how much more can uh, data centers related uh, businesses grow in the upcoming years. You can see that we have also uh, quite a positive kind of data, uh, which is sponsored by and provided by Seagate and together with IDC Global Data Sphere, you can see that it will still continue to grow because as we slowly transpire or, 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 or enter to an age where digitalization will become more and more normal, be it e-commerce, be it cloud computing, or be it how we actually do our work, productivity-related kind of uh, executions, uh, we all are actually slowly making it more cloud-centric and rather than uh, our previous 
times or previous uh, ways of working, which is uh, through, you know, um, servers within a company. So this is uh, some of the information and data we can actually take note of. And of course, if you look at some of the reads uh, that we managed just to pick, which is just getting, uh, picking out Maple Tree Industrial Trust. So uh, industrial read uh, somehow pivoted into a data center read and compare the historical returns against Axis Real Estate, uh, Axis Read listed in Malaysia, IGB Read, and Summit Read also listed in Malaysia. You can see that there is some sort of like a clear differences in terms of the historical returns. And this is, of course, uh, included. Uh, with dividends, right? So, of course, if you are currently invested in the Singapore Stock Exchange and you are someone who is into the Singapore REITs, then good for you. You are in better place, no better place than to find the great uh, REITs to invest in. But of course, if you are in other parts of the world, say, for example, Malaysia or even in the US, you might want to also turn your attention to uh, Singapore due to the uh, many, many choices of REITs and also the favorable tax structure over here uh, that does not actually tax uh, the 30% of your uh, distributable income and your dividends. So of course, I'll pass it on to Chun Bing. Uh, nevertheless, that we mentioned just now that Jim Channels actually is quite against data center risks. What are the data center risks that have been affected? And um, if someone thinks that there is an opportunity in these data center risks, uh, what should they what are their choices out there? And then what are the differences of the many choices that we have right here in the Singapore exchange? Yep. Thanks, Shupan, for the uh, coverage. So I think uh, if you're interested in data center reads, uh, basically there are multiple choice in uh, the XGX. So that's why we will go a little bit deep dive of what they really are. And then uh, what is the portfolio? Maybe you can have a comparison side by side for you to actually uh, make your decision. So I think the first one is basically uh, Maple Tree Industry Trust. Uh, it's basically uh, a read that originally didn't focus in data center, but then eventually after the few years uh, they have into market, they actually uh, take up a lot of properties and then run it as a data center. But before that, uh, basically they are also related to some of the other Maple Tree related uh, reads but then they are the one that focusing more into industry purposes. You can see the, the sponsor is actually Maple Tree Investment uh, Private Limiteds. And then uh, at, as of now, they actually manage about uh, 143 properties, uh, which is valued at 8.8 .8 billion uh, Singapore dollars. So you can see uh, if you compare between the left and the right, uh, is how they managed to evolve ever since uh, 2010 to now. Uh, as of 31st of March 2022, uh, you can see it actually doubled up the property that under their portfolio. And then most importantly, uh, there's a high percentage of the property is actually a data centers, which is about uh, 50 percent. So that's why if you're keen uh, in this type of read, but you wanted to have something that's more diversified, maybe Maple Tree Industry Trust is one of the property, uh, one of the read that you can consider uh, in Singapore. And then First, uh, this gives you a very high level view about uh, Maple Tree Industry Trust. The second one is the one that probably uh, you will be more familiar because they are kind of like the first one that is uh, classifying themselves as a pure play data center. Meaning when they started with this uh, read, they are saying, uh, I only manage data centers. When you actually uh, invest in us, it's only uh, about the data center, but of course, uh, recently, they have made some sort of adjustment. It no, is no longer a uh, pure pay data center, but still underneath there is a majority of the property still is related to data, cent uh, data centers. So you can see uh, they have actually a lot of properties under their management, uh, particularly in Singapore, but they also have some sort of exposure into Europe as well. So it's about a 70, 30, uh, if you're comparing between Asia Pacific versus Europe. And, and then of course, majority of it is still uh, data centers. And then uh, again, they are also similar to Maple Tree Industry Trust. They have a sponsor and then uh, their sponsor is basically the Capel. So this is the second one that we wanted to bring to your attention uh, if you're interested uh, in data center read in Singapore. And of course, the third one is another uh, player that is recently listed in uh, Singapore Exchange, which is called Digital Core Read. And the difference between this versus the remaining two is 
they are relatively new and they are focusing in the North America uh, region. So you can see uh, they don't have a lot of data center if you compare with uh, Maple Tree Industry Trust and, and so on, but then they are very focused serving the uh, US or even the Canada markets. So, uh, and then one of the things that actually uh, you wanted to make some attention is uh, who is their top 10 customers. So you can see the first one is actually uh, they reported as Fortune 50 uh, software company. Basically, you can somewhat relate them to Microsoft, uh, which is big, giving them the biggest business. And then, of course, uh, this is something, if you are interested in data center and then you believe uh, Silicon Valley is the one that's driving a lot of demand, then maybe instead of the other two that we have mentioned, Digital Core is the option that you can go to. Right, so I think I'll pass back to Jupan to do a deep dive into uh, three of them, comparison side by side, and then what is the other things that you should take note before investing into it. Thanks, Chumbeng. So of course you can see right here, basically uh, just the, um, I would say general information about the three REITs, if you compare them side by side. Uh, of course, before you conclude any uh, decision on which one is better than the other, don't just judge it purely by the numbers. You need to know how the numbers are derived, uh, which is why I think Previously, we also did have a more deep down analysis on capital DC read. We will link it in the description on our coverage on capital DC read when they actually uh, chose to subscribe to the uh, um, uh, bonds of the uh, M1 uh, spinning. So do check that out. But of course, if you look at the latest information between the three reads, you can see that uh, in terms of the property U or the capitalization rate, uh, Maple Tree Industrial is actually on the higher side, but just pipping uh, capital DC rate by just 0.01% or I would say one basis point. Right. Uh, digital call rates rather on the uh, lower side, which is just at 4.47%. And then we also need to also drill down into the gearing ratio, which is how leveraged these reads are. Uh, across these three reads, uh, you can see that digital call rate is actually the lowest one in terms of gearing, meaning to say that they do have the ample uh, surplus margins and, and loans on hand that they can actually take on to grow their property portfolio, right? So of course, the other REITs, if they eventually hit the uh, threshold, they might actually need to issue, um, you know, preferential offerings or do dividend investment plan to actually pare down the gearing ratio because it is actually uh, one of the requirements or the regulated uh, items that they need to adhere to. Next, we look at the DPU, but, uh, which is a trailing 12 month basis. You can see that per unit, uh, or per share, you can see that actually uh, Maple Tree Industrial Trust is giving the uh, lion share in terms of the per unit kind of uh, returns in terms of distributions, which is at uh, 13.8 uh, Singapore dollar cents, right? But if you look at the dividend yield uh, versus the uh, current trading price, you can still see that uh, Maple Tree Industrial Trust edge past uh, the other two weeks a little bit, uh, giving you a trailing yield of 5%, whereas the other two is around 0.8 percent last but not least since uh, most of the properties are under their uh, so-called control and management are actually the tangible uh, assets we also will measure them uh, or judge them based on their price to book ratio so uh, the lower the price to book ratio means to say that you are actually using a lower price to buy uh, uh, the entire unit of the so-called uh, shares or or read units, right? So of course, from here you can see that the cheapest will actually be the uh, digital core read is just trading at 1.04 times price per book ratio, whereas the other two are actually around the region of 1.5 uh, times the price to book ratio. Of course, um, when you actually take a deeper look into, uh, I would say, more hyper growing or relatively faster growing kind of read, uh, you might need to uh, take the price to book ratio with a pinch of salt. And here is why you should do so. Because if you look at the dividend yield, uh, I would say that all across all three weeks, they are actually providing some sort of like an average or close to very good percentage in terms of their dividend trailing yield returns. So around 4% 4 to 5%, which is very, very good in current climate. Uh, we do not also, you must also be aware that in the uh, also current rising interest rates uh, kind of uh, economic condition, uh, will this actually affect the 
uh, REITs when they actually refinance their debt and whether they can actually sustain their dividends uh, or distribution moving forward. So this is something you need to drill deep down and analyze more before you make your decision. And of course, looking at the growth rate, they are actually growing at a faster rate compared to the other uh, sectors uh, in other REITs. So uh, that's why that is a premium adjusted uh, or premium factor actually factor into their share price or the unit price. Hence, you see a better uh, or higher price book ratio. So it's historically, it's going high, but uh, who knows whether the upcoming periods you will see that the growth actually comes to a slowdown. And this has actually been uh, true, uh, especially for capital DC rate. Of course, we talk about it, interest rate sensitivity, uh, how these REITs, how leveraged are they, how much percentage in terms of their loans are actually fixed rates and uh, when will be the next uh, period where you need to monitor where majority of their loan and their debt comes to a maturity period and they need to actually refinance their debt. So will that actually be a period where they cannot uh, dictate how low the interest rates uh, that they want to uh, obtain uh, from the banks? And last but not least, in terms of the economic sensitivity, uh, this one I think is pretty much fixed or straightforward. Uh, it is considered uh, growing in tandem together with the um, global economy. Uh, of course, we have experienced a little bit of slowdown, hence you also see some slowing down on the growth rate. But in the period, remember, during two years ago, during the COVID period, uh, when markets actually tanked, uh, these rates actually were flourishing because a lot of companies were actually uh, being forced to uh, grow go digitalization uh, in terms of handling and managing their businesses. So for this, I think it's uh, clear cut. They are moderate and they have actually proved to be uh, pandemic resilient based on the last uh, round of uh, pandemic that we have experienced. Right. And of course, if you look at the uh, digital reality, uh, one of the key headlines that have actually affected the read was previously that uh, they actually encountered one of their customer uh, who have actually uh, filed for bankruptcy. So it was the fifth largest in their list. Uh, it was considered uh, quite a big company and uh, they actually uh, filed for bankruptcy. And then uh, it also actually caused a little bit of scare to uh, digital reality and also digital call rate. So not to say that this kind of uh, cloud-based or data center REITs are resilient enough to not face such problems. They do will still happen. It happens on a case-to-case -case basis. And of course, uh, in a period of time where if the economic uh, condition is a little bit uncertain, you might also be one a uh, little bit well aware and a little bit skeptical on the resiliencies of these data center REITs. Next, we will look at the uh, price correction uh, for data center REITs. No doubt they have actually been uh, going a lot uh, in terms of share price or unit price movement for the past few years before until recently uh, correcting downwards significantly. Uh, but within this observation, you can see that the more resilient one would be uh, maybe three industrial trusts, uh, whereas for it, uh, digital call read actually came down by 25%, whereas for capital DC read by around 16%. So what does that give you uh, in terms of the... Uh, Observation shipping. Does that mean that um, maybe three commercial, I mean, maybe three industrial trust it is, is a little bit more resilient uh, compared to the other two reads? If you wanted to not really call, call it summarize, uh, I think the key thing you should understand is uh, maybe three industri industrial tr uh, trust is somewhat a more diversified portfolio where the data center uh, only cover about 54% of the entire. Uh, properties under their management. So this is key number one. And of course, you can see that the store, the share part that's impacted the most is actually digital core read, uh, particularly due to the news that we have shared just now and also due to a lot of uncertainty in the US market, uh, especially on the height of interest rates. So this whole thing that actually give a lot of unknown uh, in the whole regions and, and then whether the tech uh, company will continue to actually lease more data center to actually do expansion. It's a lot of things that's unknown. That's why they are impacted the most and also make them slightly more 
attractive in terms of price. Technically speaking, if you compare back with their historical performance after they actually uh, IPO last year, and then uh, how this thing can have gone down and you can see their, their price to book ratio is close to one. So this is a few things to, to check and balance. But then uh, underneath uh, is how you actually judge the macro uh, side of, of economy. So where this data center located also need to be uh, taken into consideration. Whether uh, this is a pure play data center or not is also need to uh, put into consideration. And then the last one is, although there are a lot of observations saying uh, big tech also list data center, but then you don't know if few years down the road, they have decided to actually take back the control. If all these things that actually appear into the news, definitely it will give a big uh, attack to the share price and then all these things might, might impact the, the whole movement. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you, Chun Beng. So you can see that uh, even though we've mentioned, we briefly talk about data center reads right here, you can see that uh, it is uh, it has still a lot to actually deep dive into. And they are just talking about three uh, data center reads right here, which we briefly just touched on. If you are interested to learn how to analyze you know, reads or data center reads or even other reads from other subsectors, you are more than welcome to join us in our premium club where we actually have our flagship dividend gems, where we have all rules listed down to analyze different, different kind of dividend returning companies and also REITs, right? So if you are interested, do check out the link in the description where we will actually divulge all our so-called blueprint to find you and help you judge whether a REIT is a good REIT or not in the long run. And of course, as I mentioned, if REITs is your personal favorite in terms of investing, you need to check out why Singapore REITs are much, much more better than REITs in the other parts of the world. Yeah, also, we also have an article in there, link in the description. But for that, I think we will come to the end of today's video. We will hope to see you again in the next video. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section and we look forward to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.